right, I'm vlogging on the way to work. And don't worry, I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking at the road. It's like talking to someone next to me. And I'm doing this because I am so busy right now, but I wanted to get out this vlog today. And I have air conditioning. This is the time of the year where I literally can't do anything in the garage for five minutes without taking a shower and changing my outfit. So air conditioning is vital for living in Florida in the summertime. All right, so two things I want to mention in this vlog. The first one, flat pedals versus clipless pedals. <laughs> you guys are a passionate bunch, and I love it. You guys are passionate about your sport and your equipment. I got a lot of flack for not trying flat pedals more than an hour or so. Um, so the intent of that video, I changed the title if you saw. Uh, it went from flat versus clipless to just trying flat pedals after 25 years, which I think, based, you know, I listen to y'all's comments. I really do. And based on those, I think a lot of you guys had a good point. Um, it, it, the the purpose, purpose of the video wasn't really to do a true out and out comparison. Uh, it was to really just see what it's like to jump back on them. Now, granted, I probably need to be on some better pedals and shoes and here's the here's the deal is I really just um, I don't want to take the time right now to adjust my riding style it's kind of like tennis okay so I, I spent years and years and years and years developing a one-handed backhand everybody hits two-handed now but I don't want to go back and try to learn a two-handed backhand. Um, I guess it's kind of the same way with flat and clipless pedals. I just don't want to relearn. However, I, when, when the cross season is over, I may actually get a real pair of flat pedals and a real, real pair of shoes and do a true comparison. So that's why I changed the title of that video. Um, I think it's more accurate. And um, to be, I want to be fair and really give that true comparison. Um, I have an idea though about flat versus clipless. I may try to get someone else who rides flat and clipless and just kind of talk to them about what they uh, what they think the advantages and disadvantages are because um, I realize that's a subject that I'm not an expert in. Um, not something that I've really spent a lot of time doing since my BMX days. So there you go. Uh, the second thing, I've got an idea for my next project and I want y'all's feedback. Um, it's another expensive project, uh, at least initially, but um, I want to do, I want to get a an aluminum trance. Uh, the 28, so 2018 looks like Giant's only putting out um, one model of the aluminum trance, but it's a really, really good spec for the price. So I want to do kind of that mid-level trail bike versus my high-end trail bike, my carbon trance. So like, you know, how does a aluminum trail bike with aluminum wheels and SLX components compare to a higher-end trail bike with carbon frame and carbon wheels and nicer components? So I, I, it's a question I get a lot from people um, and you know even though I've ridden lower end trail bikes uh, it's been a while since I've kind of ridden them back to back especially ones that have the same geometry you know same suspension design uh, I think that would be a cool comparison because I want to I want to know I want to be really equipped to answer those kind of questions uh, when I get them and I think doing that comparison will really help so yeah let me know what you think in the comments below if you think that's a good subject uh, and uh, I've got a new giant that I'll be reviewing pretty soon um, that's all I'll say anyway wrapping up the vlog as I pull into the J-O-B paying for these bikes <laughs> alright y'all have a great day I'll talk to you in the next one